Bismillah walhamdulillah Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah and welcome to my new video in the beginner's guide to Islam series by the end of this video you will know and understand what is the meaning of purity within the religion of Islam you will know how to perform the ritual bath or shower which is called ghusl in Arabic and when it is obligatory for you to perform it you will also know how to carry out the wudu which is called ablution in English which is required before you pray and you will also know how to answer the call of nature and clean yourself appropriately according to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad If you do some quick research, you may find that there are estimates of over 5,000 new converts to the religion of Islam each year in the UK and over 25,000 in America each year alone and many others around the world as well. I can tell you from personal experience that these new Muslims absolutely need our help and one easy way that you can do that is like the video if you do like it and share it if possible. Also subscribe for future content which will help this video series gain a wider audience which will therefore make it more likely to come across the suggestion box of new Muslim people. In this beginner's guide to Islam series, I will be covering every topic which I believe is vital for new Muslims to know and understand and it will all be in one straightforward playlist inshallah, so your support would be greatly appreciated. And finally, I'm doing my very best to answer every single comment that you guys leave, so if you do want to interact and leave a comment, go ahead and do that and I will try to reply to you. Moving on, we are going to be talking about the topic of purity in this video. Please understand that this is just an overview, but inshallah enough for you to get started on your journey as a new Muslim. You will need to continue to study and gain knowledge, and I have linked a full video series in the description with an explanation for the book that we will be referring from today. I highly recommend that you set aside time in your life to watch that video series, and I cannot stress enough the importance of purity within Islam. And lastly, this is going to be a long video with a lot of information. I have tried to include everything which I believe is essential for you to know, but I don't want you to get overwhelmed. So if this is too much information for you, it's not expected that you take all of this and implement it immediately. This video series is here for you to refer back to at a later time should you need to do that. And as we are beginning, I want to start with part of a hadith from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he said that cleanliness is half of your faith. As without being clean, you are not able to perform some of the obligatory actions within Islam, such as performing the prayer. If you are new to Islam and you have not yet studied this topic, then you will need to pay attention to this video because you 100% need to know all of this information. Now to introduce this topic, I firstly want to discuss where we will be sourcing our information from. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us to follow his way. And my advice to you as a Muslim is very, very simple. Follow the way of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his closest companions, based on authentic sources from reliable scholars of the past who provide sound evidence which can be verified to be accurate. The primary source that we look at will be the Qur'an, and the secondary source would be the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And fortunately, Muslim scholars of the past have provided us with authentic hadith. I won't go into the history of this now, but I want to clearly state and for you to understand that the methodology of deciphering what actions and acts of worship we follow must be based on authentic sources that we can prove. I do not personally advise to just simply follow every bit of information that you come across on the internet or that Muslim people tell you, although some of it may be accurate. There is also many things that Muslim people do that are not actually based on authentic sources and more based on other factors such as culture. With that being said, the primary source of information in this video will be a book called Bulur Al-Muram and I've put that as a PDF in the description for you. So we are now going to move on to the first area of this discussion, which is the ritual shower or bath, which is called ghusl in Arabic. For the purposes of this video, I may refer to the ghusl as a shower or bath. So the shower is required when you enter the state of janaba, which means impurity, and this will be either after sexual intercourse, sexual discharge, menses, or postpartum bleeding. You will find more detailed information on this in the PDF book link below on page 50. Now if you've come here from the previous video and by chance you have just taken your shahada, then it's recommended that you take a shower so you can do that after you've watched this video. Now there are two forms of shower. We have the obligatory and acceptable form and the complete form. The obligatory and acceptable form is sufficed with doing the shower in this manner. 
Number one, form the intention in your heart to purify yourself from the impurity. Number two, you wash the entire body once, making sure that the water reaches the entire body, including the roots of the hairs, the difficult to reach places like the backs of the knees and the armpits, and you also rinse your mouth and nose. This shower is valid and you will become purified from any major impurity. But if a person does not perform this completely, then the ritual shower cannot be valid. Now the complete and preferred form, which is encouraged but not obligatory for you, is as follows. Number one, form the intention in your heart to purify yourself from the impurity. Number two is to say Bismillah in the name of Allah. Wash your hands three times and then wash the impurity from the private area. Number three will be to perform the full ablution, which we will discuss how to do later on in this video. Number four is to pour water over your head three times, making sure that the water reaches the roots of the hair. And number five is to wash the entire body, starting with the right side and then the left, rubbing it with the hands to make sure that the water reaches the entire body. One of the important rulings regarding this matter is that the ghusl for major impurity takes place of the wudu. So the person who has done the ritual shower, whether the complete or acceptable form, does not need to make wudu again unless they have done something which invalidates their wudu during the shower. Now that we have covered how to and when it is obligatory for you to perform the ritual shower, we are now going to move on to the ablution. I considered making my own video on how to do the ablution, however it wasn't very practical for me and I've also come across a great video from a knowledgeable Reva brother who has a demonstration on how to perform the full ablution. I've also linked that video in the description box should you need it. So let's get into that video now. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We begin as always with the praise of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and sending salutations upon the messenger of Allah. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, of his family, and his companions, all those who follow him until the last day. Okay, we are. We've got some new people in the class today, and we're going through a book that deals with the rulings of Islam. And subhanAllah, it's such a, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented us with such an excellent opportunity because the plan today was to talk about the purification for the prayer, the wudu. And I'm going to talk about it, but I want to do it from a very practical point of view. So I asked the brothers for a bucket of water. We want to do the wudu from a practical point of view. And I'm going to go outside of the book today. So I'm not really going to pay much attention to the book today because we have um, one of the new Muslims uh, with us, and likewise we have uh, a gentleman who came to the masjid who is interested in accepting Islam. We also have uh, the first lesson on wudu, which I think, to be practical, it should be something practical. And this is one of the examples that have been set for us by the companions of the Messenger wasallam. The first narration in this book about wudu is the narration of Uthman ibn Affan. How did Uthman teach the wudu? He taught the wudu by asking for a bucket of water and by doing the wudu in front of all of the people. So we want to, to, to go over the basics of the wudu today. Right down to the most, you know, the most basic uh, and the most, uh, the, the, the most fundamental parts of the wudu. And we are going to be outside of the book, so we're going to cover some things that are not in the book today. Just because we want to give a complete picture of the wudu to those people who are new, those people who are looking to accept Islam, and also as a recap for all of the Muslims, because we know that there are many times we see our Muslim brothers and sisters making mistakes when it comes to the wudu, so it doesn't hurt to have a recap for everybody, inshallah. The first thing that we want to begin with is what is the wudu? The wudu, the wudu is the purification for the prayer. And I'm going to simplify it for now and leave it at that. It is the purification that you need in order to pray. You need it for some other things as well, but for the time being, we're looking at the purification you need in order to pray. And that purification needs to be done so that a person is ready to perform the prayer. And if they were to perform the prayer without that, then their prayer uh, would not be valid. Of course, we know the new things at the moment are learning this, so it's not a problem. But we know that uh, in the future we want to get them to a stage where for every prayer they are in a state of proper purification. And there are certain things that break the wudu. But for now we're just going to keep it pretty simple. 
okay, with the things that break the rule. We're going to keep it pretty simple for now, for the sake, again, we're going to cover this in our class in more detail later on, but for the sake of the new Muslims and when you're explaining Islam to somebody and you want to keep it simple, then to be really simple, the things that break the wudu in a very summarized form, everything that comes out of the front or the back passage, in addition to going to sleep. That's basically what, it, what breaks the wudu. So urinating, breaking wind, going to the toilet, um, you know, uh, anything, even if someone has a problem where they're bleeding from the front or the back passage, anything that comes out of the front, anything that comes out of the back, and unconsciousness through sleep, fainting, you know, anything like that. That is essentially what breaks the whole. So any kind of uh, sort of, uh, uh, any sort of discharge, whether it's from the front or from the back, and likewise, you're, you're going to sleep or you're being unconscious, breaks the whole. So this is established for us, and we're simplifying it today, okay? We'll, we'll go into some other things later on, but we'll keep it simple for today. We'll keep it very, very simple for today. So if, for example, one of us uses the bathroom, or one of us breaks wind, or one of us goes to sleep, and then after that they want to pray, then they need to make the purification for the prayer. And the basic means of purifying yourself for the prayer <coughs> requires water. That's the basic means. Now there is a backup, and we know about this, there's a backup for when you don't have water, there's a backup for, you know, if, you, if, you're, if, if your water isn't working or if you can't find water or if you're stuck in the middle of the desert and you're, you know, two days from water, there's a backup. We'll talk about that in another class. But for today, and of course for us, you know, alhamdulillah, we're in a situation where water is very plentiful and we don't really have a problem getting hold of water, so we need some water. And it doesn't matter whether it's a bucket of water like this or whether you do it from the tap, the actions are all the same. However... In the Sunnah of the Prophet, in the example of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they would not have taps. They would have something like a bucket of water. And it would be smaller than this. This is too much water to, you don't need this much water to, to make wudu. But some, somewhere around, you know, sort of half a litre to 750 ml of water, something like that. But of course, we have the taps, and you just leave the tap on long enough for you to be able to make the wudu. Now, the wudu begins with. What does the wudu begin with? Who can tell me what the wudu begins with? The intention. Very good. Someone's awake. So you have to have the intention. What does the intention mean? What does it mean to have the intention for wudu? It doesn't mean for you to say anything. It just means that if I stopped you and said to you, Muhammad, what are you doing? What are you doing? You'd say, okay, I'm making wudu. The fact that you consciously know you're actually making the purification for the prayer means that you, are, you have your intention. Now let me give you an example to make this even clearer. Sometimes, you know, because we do our purification for the prayer a lot, and most people, maybe we don't quite do it five times a day because we might keep the, we might, you know, keep the, the state of purification for a while, but we might do it four times a day or three times a day. When you're doing your purification for the prayer, it becomes so automatic and so robotic. What happens? That sometimes you go to the bathroom and you're just washing your hands, and then you're washing your hands and you start washing your mouth, and then you just, and before you know it, you, you're, you're doing the actions of the wudu. But you haven't made any intention, you don't know what, you, you're just basically on robot mode. Or just, you know, you don't even think about, that's not, you need to have in your mind consciously that I am preparing myself for the prayer and making the, the purification for the prayer. Okay, so you need to have that in your mind, that's the intention. And then you need to say, Bismillah. Now again, for you Muslims, all of these words are things they're going to have to learn, but it doesn't matter. For now, do your best. Bismillah means in the name of Allah. So if you can't say it in Arabic, then you can say it in English. In the name of Allah. Bismillah. And then you need to go to step one. And the interesting thing about step one is that step one isn't a part of the actual wudu. Step one is to wash your hands three times, your right hand three times, and your left hand three times. To wash your hands, your right hand three times, and your left hand three times. And when we see your hand, generally we mean just past the wrist to the tip of the finger. So we're talking about washing quite thoroughly your hands three times, the right three times, and the left three times. But this isn't a part of the wudu. This is like a beginning for the wudu. Why? 
What do you notice about the difficulty when you don't have a tap of making all the way in a bucket like this? The difficulty is that your hands are dirty. And then you go and put your hands into the water and your hands are dirty. And the whole water becomes dirty. So the example we have of the way that we make wudu is the first thing we would do for making it from a bucket is to wash our hands three times and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it for you even if it does make a lot of mess on the table. I'm sure it'll dry out by the time the shape uses it tomorrow. So what you want to do is you want to take the bucket this way and to and I'm not gonna use a great deal of water because I'm gonna make a mess. And you've done one. You've used some water, you've washed your hands once. That's one. Okay, you need to take a little bit more water. I'm going to try not to make too much of a mess. And there you've got two. And you're going to repeat that three times on the right, and then again three times on the left. Now, if you're using uh, a tap, you don't really need to worry about pouring the water six times in total. But if you're using a bucket, then you do need to make sure that it's three full times on the right and three full times on the left. If you're using a tap, perhaps the easy way to do it is just to put your hand under, wash it, put your hand under, wash it, put your hand under, Wash it, there's your three times, and then your left hand side. That's your preparation. Until now, you haven't started the wudu. Until now, you haven't started making wudu. All you've done is just get ready for the wudu. So we'll recap three things. You did your intention, which means that you knew you, what you were doing. You weren't thinking about, you know, what am I making for the tea? And just going, you, you knew what you were doing. And you said, Bismillah, which means, in the name of Allah, and you washed your hands, your right hand three times, and your left hand three times. The rest of the wudu, you can make by putting your hand into the bucket. Because now you've washed your hands, you can begin the wudu. And you're going to begin the wudu with the very first part of the wudu itself, which is to wash the mouth and the nose. How do you wash the mouth and the nose? You take a handful of water. One hand, use your right hand, because in Islam we use our right hand for cleanly things like uh, the to do with acts of worship and cleanliness and things like that. So, you're going to take a cup full of water in your hand. You're going to take that water into your mouth by sipping it and then sniffing it up your nose. Okay, so I'm going to break it down again. So you can see, I'm going to swallow this water because otherwise it's going to make a terrible mess. You're going to sip the water into your mouth and you're going to sniff the water into your nose. You're going to swirl the water around your mouth and gargle. Okay? So you suck the water into your mouth, and you've got some water in your mouth. In the same hand, you sniff it into your nose. Now it's one, it's one kind of, it's one kind of action. Instead of doing it twice, one for your water, one for, it's just one handful of water. And if you actually, if you actually do it in one go, it's actually you don't swallow the water, but I'm. Just trying not to make a mess of the rest of it. So you take the water into your mouth and you bring the water up your nose. At this point, you should feel you've got plenty of water in your mouth and you've got plenty of water in your nose. At this point, what you need to do, you need to swill the water around your mouth. We call this a mud mama. Swill the water around your mouth and gargle. And of course, you don't gargle when you're fasting because that would let the water go down your throat, but you gargle. Then, what you want to do is to expel the water from your nose, okay? Which is to blow it out of your nose like this. <sighs> blow it out of your nose so that all of that water that was brought into your nose gets blown out. Of course, I'm taking a very long time to explain it, but actually when you're doing it, it's uh, pretty much instantaneous. And then you spit the water out of your mouth, okay? So then you spit the water out of your mouth. So now we're gonna do this one more time. You're gonna take the water up in your hands. And spit the water out. You're going to do that entire process three times. So, okay? Three times. Okay? Three times. Now you've cleaned your mouth and you've cleaned your nose. You've cleaned your mouth and you've cleaned your nose. And we said the correct opinion is to do it with one hand, not with two, to do it with your right hand, and to do it all in one motion, not to do one cup for the mouth and one for the nose, but to do it all in one motion. Then expel, gargle, and spit. That's your mouth and your nose. The next thing you're going to do is your face. 
and your face is right from the top of your hairline to the bottom of your beard if you have one. Okay, so from right from the top of your hairline down to the bottom of your chin, including the beard if you have one. This is all your face. And from all the way to ear to ear. Okay, so from the top to the bottom and from ear to ear. All of it needs to get wet. Okay, again, I'm going to show you. We're going to do it three times. We're going to take your two hands. And you can see that in that wall there, the water is reaching all the way from the top of the head right down to the tip of including the wiping over the beard and from the two ears, one side to the other. Okay, and you're going to do that three times. Okay, on the third time, if you have a particularly thick beard, or if you, indeed if you have a beard at all, you need to run your fingers through your beard. Okay, which is to take some water, if your hands are already wet, or to take some water, and to put your fingers through and get the water right onto the, the chin. And this is called taqlil al putting your fingers through your beard and cleaning the beard. Now that needs to be done that needs to be done once during the wudu, but you need to wipe over your beard because the beard is a part of the face. So you need to wipe over the face and that's going to be three times. So let's go back to the beginning. We started with our hands. Before the wudu we did our hands. Okay? It's not it's not gonna make any difference for it's gonna make a mess of it. It's gonna make a mess of it. It's worth it inshallah. So our hands three times, right and left. And if you're using a bucket, you're going to do it from outside of the bucket. Then your mouth and your nose. And we said, you take your right hand, bring it into your mouth, into your nose, blow it out of your nose, swill it around your mouth, gargle, and spit. And that's going to be three times. Then the face, three times. Okay, from the very tip, all the way down to the bottom, and the both sides of both ears. Three times each. Okay, three times each. Then you're going to do your arms. Now, there's a couple of mistakes a lot of Muslims are going to make. And not so much new Muslims, but old Muslims are going to make these mistakes usually. And that is that they get confused about washing their hands. They think they've already washed their hands, but they haven't already washed their hands. The time you're washing your hands in the beginning was before the actual purification. The washing of the hands in the purification happens at this point now. And what you're going to do there are, I mean, at the end of the day, as long as you actually wash from the tip of your finger to past your elbow, you're fine. However you wash it, if you run it under the tap or if you put it in the sink. But the sunnah, in terms of doing it, is to do this. Scoop up and let it run down the hand, come back up, and get in between the fingers, okay? So you've ended up all the way from here down to here. From here down to here. It's got to go past the elbow. So when you look at it after three times, your elbow should be wet, past your elbow should be wet. It shouldn't be like that, because I didn't, wet, I didn't wash anything yet. All I did is just wipe it. It needs to be, and if you do it properly, then you can see that it ends up completely wet. My arm is completely soaked, all the way from past the elbow to the tip of the finger. And you do that three times on your right hand side, and then three times on your left hand side. So again, we're going like this. One, make sure you get your hands. This is where a lot of Muslims make mistakes. Because what the Muslims do is they wash from the wrist to the elbow. And this is a mistake. At this point here, you need to wash from the tip of the finger to past the elbow. So one mistake people make is they only wash up to their elbow without going past. And another mistake people make is they wash from the wrist instead of washing all the way to the tips of the fingers. You can do it however you want. If you put your arm under the tap or however you feel most comfortable, but the sunnah, the best way to do it is to scoop up the water, let the water run all the way down, and just make sure that the water's gone everywhere with your hands. Three times on the right, three times, exactly the same thing on the left. And by that time, it should be well and truly wet. The next point, we're getting to the end now, very, very near, is to wipe over the head. Now, all of the others up to now have been washing. We've been washing our hands and washing our face and washing our mouth, washing our arms, but we haven't, this now we're up to is wiping. So what you're going to do is, wet your hands. Okay, wet your hands. They do not need to hold any water in. They just need to be dipped in the water until they're wet. 
Start at the front of your head. Go all the way back with both hands to the back, not the neck. And all the way forward again. Got your hands? Just one time. One time only. From the front to the back and back to the front again. That's all you need to do. You do not need to wash your head. You do not need to wipe your neck. It's not allowed for you to wipe your neck like some Muslims, they wipe their neck after that. Don't wipe your neck. From the front to the back and back again to the front again. Okay? So that's now you've wiped, you've wiped your head. Okay? Without taking any more water, without wetting your hands again, put your index fingers inside here, not right inside your ear, just inside the outer part of your ear and your thumbs at the back. Use the thumb, use the thumb, I have to turn to the microphone, use the thumb to clean the outside of the ear and the index finger to clean the inside of the ear. You only need to do it once. So we remind ourselves about that step. We just washed our hands and our arms. Dip your fingers in, get your hands wet, start at the front, go to the back, back to the front, and there you go. Index finger cleans the inside of the ear, thumbs clean the outside of the ear. The only thing you have left is to wash your feet. The only thing you have left is to wash your feet. And washing the feet again needs to be past the ankle. It needs to be past the ankle. So it's not for you to wash, you know, just the bottom of your feet, but you need to wash your feet thoroughly. And you need to go in between your toes because the water, in general, won't get to where you want it to get. So what you need to do is you need to make sure, I'll come around the front, I have socks on, but you need to make sure that when you wash, you go past the ankle and you use your small finger to go in between the toes. Also, another mistake people make is they don't wash their feet. They just get them wet. You need to actually wash your feet. You need to actually have your feet washed three times on the right and three times on the left. Three times on the right and three times on the left. I'm going to add one thing okay, to this, and that is... Well, actually, no, we're not. We'll, we'll deal with that next lesson. Because I think if we get too far, we're going to complicate things. We wanted to keep things simple. So what I want to do for you now, so the brother's kindly given me another bucket. So inshallah, what I want to do for you now is to do the wudu in full, from beginning to end, without any commentary, so that you guys can see it from beginning to end. Again, um, well, this is as close to the sunnah as we know, but we'll try to get it as good as we can. But you get the idea, the theory is more important, but at least you can see it, you know, you can see it out. So we begin by having the intention to actually purify ourselves from the prayer, and by saying Bismillah, or in the name of Allah. And then what we're going to do is, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to wash our hands three times. Now if we're making it from a bucket, we want to wash our hands outside of the bucket. So, and if you're using a tap, it's not so difficult. There's one. Three. And then again, you want to do the same thing for the other side. One. Two. And if you're making it from a bucket, that's the only time you need to pour the water. After that, you can stick your hands in, stick your legs in, whatever it is you want to do. But for the first bit, you, you wash your hands outside. And the idea is to get your hands clean so that you can put them into the bucket. But obviously, if you have a tap, you don't have that problem. Okay? So then we start with the, go to the mouth and the nose. This That's our mouth and our nose three times. Then we have the face. Including the last one. With the beard. And then we have the arms and hands.
should not all the way past the angles. Then we wet our hands, wipe all the blood from the back and our ears. And then I'm going to wipe over my socks, which we'll talk about in next week, but we'll talk about wiping over the socks next week. But if you're making a full move here, what you would do is you would wash your right foot three times, making sure to go in between the toes, and your left foot three times, making sure in both cases to go over the ankles and in between the toes. And that, inshallah, completes the movement. <laughs> Now what I'm going to do now for you, inshallah, just to conclude the lesson, and before we tidy up the lesson, right? Inshallah, we're going to read the same hadith from Uthman ibn Affan, So we're going to read the, the we're going to read the narration of the description of the wudu in the same way. Now this isn't the most complete because there are there are going to be bits missing because this is just one narration and there are many 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 narrations that we're going to cover as we're covering the chapter of wudu. But this is perhaps the most complete of them. And so we can listen, and as I usually do, I'll read it for you in Arabic, and then inshallah ta'ala will read it in English as well. قال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى باب صفة الوضوء وفرائضه وسننه عن يونس عن ابن شهاب عن عطاء بن يزيد الليثي قال أخبره عن عطاء بن يزيد الليثي أخبره أن أن حمران مولى عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه أخبره أن عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه دعا بوضوء فتوضأ فغسل كفيه ثلاث مرات ثم تمضمى واستنكر واستنشق ثم غسل وجهه ثلاث مرات ثم غسل يديه اليمنى إلى المرطق ثلاث مرات ثم غسل يده اليسرى مثل ذلك ثم مسح رأسه ثم غسل رجله اليمنى إلى الكعبين ثلاث مرات ثم غسل رجله اليسرى مثل ذلك ثم قال رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم توضأ نحو وضوء هذا ثم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من توضأ نحو وضوء هذا ثم قام فركع ركعتين لا يحدث فيهما نفسه غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه قال ابن شهاب وكان علماؤنا يقولون هذا الوضوء أسبغ ما يتوضأ به أحد للصلاة متفق عليه وهذا لفظ مسلم وقال البخاري ثم تمضمض واستنشق واستنفر. So this narration is narrated by Yunus from Ibn Shihab from Abu Ali Yazid al Layfi that Humran, Mawla Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, informed that Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, called for a bucket of water. He called for it, Wadu. He asked for some water to make Wadu. Then he washed his hands three times. So we showed you the washing of the hands three times. Then he swilled the water around his mouth. Then he took the water into his nose and blew the water out of his nose. Then he washed his face three times. Then he washed his right hand all the way up to the elbow three times. Then he washed his left hand the same number of times. Then he wiped over his head then he washed his right foot all the way up to the ankles three times. Then he washed his left foot in the same way. Then he said, I saw the Messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, make wudu in this way, or similar to the way that I did. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever makes wudu in a similar way to mine, then he stands and prays two units of the prayer. He does not... Uh, busy himself with anything else. He does not preoccupy himself with anything else. All of his previous sins will be forgiven. Ibn Shihab said, our scholars said, this wudu is the most complete wudu that anyone can make for the prayer. And this is recorded by other Muslims. But this wudu is the most complete wudu that you can make for the prayer. You can't make a wudu more complete than this wudu. It is the most complete and the most, the best way of making wudu that you can. You can go shorter than that, which we'll talk about later on, but this is the most complete way that you can make wudu for the prayer. Now it's important to know that the wudu is one of the conditions to your prayer being valid if you have access to water with which to make the ablution. And I also want to mention whether touching the private parts without a barrier invalidates the wudu. There are two different opinions on this. 
Some of the scholars say that touching the private parts does not invalidate the wudu, and other scholars differentiated between touching the private parts with and without desire. And to summarize this, there is a very strong opinion that if a person touches the private parts, it is mustahab or encouraged for him to make wudu again. But if it was with desire, then the person must make the wudu again. I also want to mention the topic of wiping over the socks. So if you are not in the state of Janaba, you can go ahead and make ablution, which includes washing your feet, and then you can put your socks on over your feet. Now, if you need to make wudu later on in that day, you do not need to remove your socks. You may simply wipe over the top of the socks rather than having to take them off every time. Now, I'm not going to go much more into this in this particular video, but it's something for you to be aware of. There is also a 24 hour period with which you have to make wudu over your socks until you have to take your socks off and do it again. And this time is also extended to three days if you are traveling. And whilst we are talking about this, I also want to just give you a bit of information that you are also able to pray with your shoes on, providing that your shoes do not have any impurity on them. So if you are in an outdoor area, for example, you may pray without having to remove your shoes. So let's move on to answering the call of nature and appropriately cleaning yourself according to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is to clean the private parts using the left hand and to completely avoid using the right hand when touching the private parts, especially when using the bathroom. Now after answering the call of nature, you may clean yourself using the following methods. You must cleanse yourself from the impurity by using either water, which is the best and most perfect way, or with something other than water to remove the impurity, such as toilet paper, fabric, stones or something else. And when a person relieves themselves, they must do one of the following things. Purify yourself with water, which is called istinja. The reason for this is that is the most basic way to remove the impurity properly. Just as you would use water to remove any impurities from the bottom of your foot, so too should you use water after answering the call of nature to remove any impurity. And you should use water if you have access to it. Now, if you do not have access to water, you can do what is called istijma, which is to remove the impurity using something other than water. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, lived in a desert and at times he did not have access to water, so he would use something like stones to remove the impurity. And there is an authentic hadith where the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, forbade us from using less than three stones for the purposes of istijma. Now, three stones, meaning a minimum of three wipings, regardless of what you are using to remove the impurity and if you have access to but a shortage of water then you can remove the impurity and then finally clean yourself using water now something else to know if you do not have access to water and you are performing istijma that if after you have performed the third wiping the stone or the item still comes out impure you must continue to wipe until you have completely removed the impurity now for myself as a revert, when I came across this subject, I found it to be very foreign. It was not the normal method that I would use when I was not a Muslim to clean myself. However, after some time, it became quite obvious that this is very logical and makes a lot of sense. If, for example, you were to step in some dog feces while you were walking with bare feet, you are very unlikely to not want to use water to remove this before you put your shoes and socks on. Now, I would advise that you do need to prepare yourself in some way. If you are at home, you can have a bottle or a jug that is dedicated to cleaning yourself. However, if you know that you are going out and you may need to answer the call of nature, if, for example, you're going to work, then you can take an empty bottle with you and you use this when you go to use the restroom. Now, after you've answered the call of nature, you can use tissue to clean yourself if you like, but then you should use the water and your left hand to remove the impurity from your body and then go ahead and wash your hands with soap after this. Now, I do want to mention that we use our left hand for unclean things like cleaning the private area, and we use our right for pure things like eating and also shaking people's hands. And finally, I want to add on this particular subject that this has to be a universal rule. We cannot just simply assume that everybody in the world has access to running water and toilet paper. So there has to be something in place in order for you to appropriately clean yourself if you do not have access to these things. And I also want to mention that the sunnah of the prophet peace be upon him would be to enter the unclean area where you would answer the call of nature with your left foot and you leave with your right foot there is also a supplication or dua in arabic where you would say allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal khaba'ith when you enter the restroom and when you leave you say ghufranika 
And I also thought that I may mention the topic of saying Bismillah when you start your ablution whilst you're in an unclean area. In general, we do not say the name of Allah in any unclean areas and there are two main opinions on what to do if you are making the ablution whilst in an unclean area. One of the opinions is that the person should say Bismillah in their heart and they do not utter it on their tongue. And another opinion is because it is considered by some scholars to be obligatory to say Bismillah when you start the ablution, that the ruling of not saying the name of Allah in this area would be waived because you are doing something which is obligatory upon you. So I will leave it up to you to research this a bit more and make your own decision on which opinion you want to go with. But I would also say that in most cases you are able to say Bismillah and simply enter the unclean area and then proceed to make wudu. Moving on, the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was to sit down when answering the call of nature, including whilst urinating. It is not forbidden to urinate while standing up, but it is the sunnah to do so. Firstly, because it is more concealing, but also because it reduces the risk of urine dropping onto either yourself or your clothes. However, it is allowed for you to urinate standing up if you are a man, on the condition that there is no risk of any drops of urine going on either yourself or your clothing. And on top of this, you must not expose your private area to anyone. Now, there's just a few more things that I want to mention. When you're answering the call of nature, you should not face the Qibla, which is the direction that we pray towards. You must conceal and cover your private area and completely avoid places where people frequently visit, such as pathways, under the shade of a tree or by a river bank where someone may go to collect water. So we are now done with the video and the topic of purity. I know that the video may have seemed quite technical, but I have done my very best to provide you with the essential information that you need to know in order to begin your journey in Islam. I strongly, strongly advise that you need to seek more knowledge on this topic. As I mentioned before, I have linked the PDF book in the description, as well as a full explanation to the book. Any good that I have done in this video has been from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and any mistakes are from myself. Now, if you have come to this point in the video, I really hope that you enjoyed it and it was useful for you. If you did like it, I would appreciate if you do leave a like. And I will see you in the next video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you've managed to watch the video all the way through and you've made it this far, I thought I would throw in a little bonus content for you. So what I would do if you are at a place like work or you are in a place where you don't have a water bottle with you and you do want to clean yourself with water and do it properly, what you can do is you can go into the cubicle and grab a bunch of tissue, go to the tap and soak the bunch of tissue with water and then what you can do is when you've finished, you can squeeze the water out of the tissue onto your private area and you can use that to clean you and at least that will do something for you so i really appreciate you watching once again and i will see you in the next video inshallah